No! No! Oh God! No! <laughs> no way! No way! This is scarier than that husky girl in seventh grade gym class. Hold up! Will this thing really hurt me? Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, where, I'm happy to say, we're finally out of our blue period. Look, no hot button issues in the title. No critiques of gamers or the gaming industry. No sales charts or serious music. And no PewDiePie. Well, there he was, but he won't be back for the duration of the episode. Leaving us with just our favorite sociopath and a ridiculous question that can actually be solved realistically, but we're gonna try to anyway, cause this is Game Theory, damn it, and we're back. So, question of the day. Just how effective of a bullet is Mario's bullet bill? This actually came in from the Game Theorist Reddit page, and when I first saw the post, I instantly knew it had to become an episode. Loyal Theorists Rumble Zeman and Roflicious did a ton of work to come up with their versions of the answer, and so now it's my job to analyze the data and give my take on whether Bullet Williams really live up to their name, or if they're just a bunch of projectile posers. To do that, we need to know the force that Bullet Bill O'Reilly is packing, but first we have to know the scale of the Mushroom Kingdom using Mario's height. I've calculated it before as 4 foot 8 inches in my two most controversial videos. <laughs> yeah, right. Boobs and Sonic. The thing is, in that calculation, I used Super Smash Brawl, which has inconsistent scaling across its characters, as many, and I mean many, diligent and helpful commenters are always eager to remind me. So refinding Mario's height shouldn't be a problem, except for one thing. Mario fluctuates in size, and not just when he has a mushroom either. It varies game to game. His relative size to Bowser? Always changing. In the jump from 3D to 2D, 2D change. Main series games to- What are you doing? Get that out of here. We don't acknowledge that game's existence. It's ridiculous. We can prove the guy has antisocial personality disorder, and that his girlfriend has Stockholm Syndrome, but we can't tell how frickin' tall he is? <sighs> a bug up my butt. Well, let's try a different tactic. Why not compare Mario's height to someone consistent? Someone with a height that's easy to prove. Someone who starred in one of the worst games of all time. Kazam! We're talking Shaq. What, you didn't know about Mario's cameo appearance in Shaq Fu? Of course you didn't, it doesn't exist. I'm talking about NBA Street V3 for the GameCube, where Shaquille O'Neal himself can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mario, white men can't Jumpman Mario playing the old round ball. If Mario isn't scaled to real size here, well, that just wouldn't make a lick of sense. Shaq IRL stands at 7 foot 1 inch or 2.16 meters. Comparing the two using the power of math puts Mario at 4 foot 6 inches or 1.39 meters. Finally, Shaquille O'Neal does something useful in a video game. But seriously, Shaq Fu successfully getting funded on Indiegogo? Do you people just have so much money that you don't know what to do with it, or what am I missing here? Even more absurd than people actually funding that atrocity is that now we need Mario to cross over with himself. You see, we just calculated the height of 3D modern Mario, not 2D retro Mario. Again, something you ever helpful commenters taught me. <coughs> Sonic episode. <coughs> so, we need a game that fuses both eras of Mario together. Can you come up with one? I'll let you think about it. Super Mario RPG. Sorry, I couldn't wait that long. Super Mario RPG has a room in Booster's Tower, where you switch between 3D and 2D Mario. By comparing Mario's pre-curtain, post-curtain, and time's running out forms, we find that 8-bit mini Mario is 0.65 meters, or 2 foot 1 inch. It's so tiny! But it is humanly possible. At that height, Mario is just barely taller than the record holder for the shortest woman in the world, Jyoti Amji, who stands at 2 foot 0.7 inches, or 0.6 meters. Funny enough though, Mini Mario would tower over the world's shortest man, Chandra Dangi, who stands at an incredible 1 foot 10 inches. 1 foot 10 inches. 
0.55 meters. Having solved that gaming mystery once and for all, we can apply it to our beady-eyed bullet. Remember, these quote-unquote bullets are huge, so Mario getting hit by one is going to be less of a typical bullet injury and more like getting hit by a car or falling out of a window. Those things hurt you because of fast changes in velocity over a short time. You fall out the window and hit the ground, you go from moving very quickly to a speed of zero in a fraction of a second. The body can't handle the force of that change. Quite literally, it's not the fall that kills you, it's the sudden stop. For a car crash or bullet bill strike, it's the exact opposite. A person, in this case Mario, will be going from zero to some speed almost instantaneously. If the screen didn't freeze, you would probably see him getting thrown backward as the bullet bill causes him to accelerate or plow through his body if the surface area of the contact is actually quite small. But looking at the bullet bills, it's actually not the case. In the end, it's all about force, meaning we eventually want to get here. Mass times acceleration equals FAP. FAP? Oh, physics, you so dirty. Minus the coefficient of friction times mass times 9.81 meters per second squared, which represents gravity. Today, the thing we're interested in is FAP. Well, with men, isn't that always the case? It was also the thing we were interested in during the boob episode. Haha, <laughs> nudge nudge. FAP is the applied force, and that's the one that's going to hurt, which is why we're solving for it. So let's start filling in these numbers. Friction is easy. Here's a chart that gives bullet-shaped objects a frictional coefficient of 0.2. 295. And over here, acceleration is zero. Yes, bullet Billy Bob Thornton is accelerating enough to counteract any wind resistance, or should I say drag, he's flying into, but his constant speed across the screen means his net acceleration is zero, which knocks out this whole side of the equation. In other words, all we need is mass and love but for now we'll just focus on mass. Bullet Billiam Shakespeare here is basically a cylinder with a cone on top. So break out the geometry, cause we're about to turn up the volume. Volume, get it? Cause we're calculating vol- <sighs> Never mind, my jokes are wasted here. Counting the pixels and then using Mario's R scale, we're able to find that each projectile peat is 112,939 cubic centimeters. No way! Can you believe it? Of course you can't, because that number is meaningless. What the heck does 112,000 cubic centimeters look like? I don't know, and I'm certain you don't either. So let me translate that for you. That's a bullet the size of a small toddler headed straight for your face. But will it kill you? To know that, we need to unearth what bullet Billy Mays is made out of. And let's just cut to the chase. The answer is iron. Notice that bullet Bill and Ted get launched out of a cannon. Clue number one. And not just any cannon. Cannons that sometimes receive names, like Big Bertha in Super Mario RPG. Real life cannons also had a tradition of being named, like Roaring Megs from the 17th century or Mons Meg in Edinburgh, Scotland. Clue number two. And in the early days of cannon warfare, it was round shot, the stereotypical cannonball as we think of it, made to rip through the hulls of ships. A ball of pure iron. Eventually, round shot was completely phased out for shells, which had better aerodynamic effects. These two were made out of iron. In the airships of Super Mario Bros. 3, we see both types of ammo getting put to use. Round shot and our bullet Bill Clintons in the shape of a shell, both getting shot out of cannons, and both with the same black shine of iron. Clue number three. So really, bullet bills are just glorified cannonballs. They should be called cannon bills. Wait, cannonball, cannon bill. Half-Life 3 confirmed. Now, iron has a nice mid-range density at 7.87 grams per cubic centimeter. Time to visit the DMV, or density equals mass divided by volume. We need mass, so mark applying density by volume gives us 888 kilograms, which again means nothing until you convert it into a metric we all understand, and that's one ton. 2,000 pounds, or half a car's worth of bullet, headed straight at Mario. That'll teach you to grind your brother's shoe at the end of tennis games. So, back to our equation. Zero equals FAP minus 0.295 times 888 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. That results in 2,570 newtons of force. Which, actually, that isn't all that much. Especially for an object of that size. That's half the force of a 100 miles 
mph fastball. It takes at least 3,300 newtons to crack a rib and 4,000 to crack the femur, so it's not going to be breaking any bones. And to verify, I checked the speed of everything. Bullet Bill travels at about 12 meters per second, or about 27 miles per hour. It'd be like getting hit with a mid-sized moped. Sure, it would hurt, but probably wouldn't do any permanent damage. So we have our answer. Bullet Bill? Ha! Huh. Hardly. More like leisurely meandering William. Okay, but let's up the ante. Surely this guy has to do some damage. Bonsai Bill. These puppies are the size of three mini Marios stacked on top of each other. It's a six foot tall behemoth. Redoing all the calculations we just went through, volume jumps up to about 7.4 million cubic centimeters, mass becomes about 58,000 kilograms, and force skyrockets to 168,000 newtons. That, my friends, would certainly do some damage if it weren't traveling so slowly. Altogether, Bonsai Bill clocks in at 7.7 .7 meters per second, or 17 miles per hour. It's not like it's coming out of nowhere and surprising you, the hover round is clocking in speeds that would make Bonsai Bill jealous. And because it's so huge and rounded in the front, you're not actually going to be hit with the full 168,000 newtons anyway. The impact is going to be spread across a large cross section of your body, meaning that a lot of that force is going to dissipate elsewhere. No, Bullet Bill isn't an issue, nor is Bonsai Bill. Here's the one you want to look out for. The Golden Bonsai Bill. Even bigger, clocking in at 20 million cubic centimeters. That's the equivalent of about 5,300 gallons got milk, except that we're talking pure gold. So not only is Gold Member here the biggest bullet in the franchise, it's also the most massive. See, gold has a very high density, over twice as dense as iron, making this gallon guzzler 390,000 kilograms or 430 tons of gold. To compare, this one bullet would make up one-tenth of the total gold in Fort Knox. In June of 2012, gold was valued at $1,618.82 per ounce. That means that this golden bullet would be worth, in total, $2,227,496,320.98. Sorry, still not as much as diamond armor. Oh, and it only travels 2 meters per second, or 4 miles per hour in total, so definitely not deadly. Unless, of course, someone pops a non-bill bullet in your ass in their attempts to steal away the gold. I wanna know where to go, like, I want the gold. Give me the gold, I want the gold. Where de gold at? I want de gold, indeed. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Did you like the video? Then you have one different person to thank, NatureBox. Wait, 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 I know we've done this before, but hold up. I think you'll really like this one. Get this, they're snacks that get delivered to your door. And they're healthy, which normally would be a turnoff for me, but get this. I'll admit it, I was skeptical. I don't like granola bars, but on a whim, I tried them one day while playing Dark Souls, a game so frustrating it just makes you want to eat away your feelings. And I was like, oh, this game is so hard. But this salted caramel pretzel pop is taking away all my pain. Personally, I like the flavors that sound unhealthy but actually are healthy, like apple pie oat cluster and Santa Fe corn sticks. And the other great thing is thanks to them supporting this episode of the show, my editor Ronnie gets to buy a new pair of shoes. Say hi, Ronnie. I quit. By typing this into your search bar, clicking the link in the description, you get 50% off your first month. So definitely worth a trial run. So get some game night goodies delivered to your door without having to leave your well-maintained butt groove, all while helping out the show. Seriously though, the theorists did such an incredible job with the Hulu thing we did a couple weeks ago, that these guys wanted to be a part too. So thank you guys for believing in us and what we do on this channel, and for trying out products like this when we advertise for it. It really does make a difference. And also, thank NatureBox for helping support us by checking out some of their awesome snacks. Thanks guys. Game theorists, rock my socks.